Let's return to the wash-up on the budget <coughs> was handed down last night. Joining me now in the studio, Deputy Opposition Leader Susan Lee. Thanks very much for your time. It's a pleasure, Tom. Busy time, yes. I know, for everyone. Um, cost of living budget is what it's being framed as. So how does it go on that, that particular metric? What, what do you think of the measures that are in there and I guess what they're doing and who they're targeting as well? Is it, is it well targeted? Well, I think it's the sort of budget you deliver as Treasurer if you've got a PhD in politics, not a PhD in economics. And no, unfortunately, it doesn't address the cost of living crisis that is biting across Australia. Actually, there's broad agreement, Tom, that there is a cost of living crisis and it is biting across Australia. Uh, unfortunately, what this budget does is provide short-term compensation to address long-term problems in the economy that Labor has absolutely no plans to fix. The short-term compensation is because, in particular, cost of living is happening at its most acute while we've got inflation going. So what about who they've targeted? It's more about lower-income Australians. Mm. Is that fair enough? Are they the ones doing it toughest in these times? A lot of Australians are doing it tough, and, of course, people on welfare payments are doing it tough. But we want people to move off welfare payments. We want people to get ahead. We don't want people to continue to receive rent assistance, unemployment benefits, allowances that keep them struggling, no matter how small the increases are or how big the increases are. We want people to do well. That's how we set up the economy at the end of the pandemic. And unfortunately, dealing with the structural issues and pressures in the economy is not what this budget does. And adding so, to welfare payments does not do what it needs to do to address those structural problems. And unfortunately, as uh, many have told your uh, commentators, mm. Tom, this budget adds to inflation. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. But just on... I mean, you mentioned we don't want people on these payments. Business groups themselves have been saying, for example, on JobSeeker, make it higher because it's really hard to even look for a job when the payment's really low. Are you disagreeing with that? Look, it is really hard to live on these payments, but the vacancy rate in the economy is sky high. And I've travelled from Townsville to Turak, from Perth to Penrith and everywhere in between, and I speak to small businesses and employers every single day who are mm. crying out for someone to work in their business. So, you think so this, my point is, yeah. rather than accept that we're going to have a cohort of people on welfare payments, and there will always be some, I acknowledge that, and there will always be barriers to employment, I acknowledge that. What we need to do is move people into the jobs that are crying out for them because that's okay. actually in their interests. So, to that point, are there any particular measures you oppose that have been outlined in the budget in terms of those welfare increases? Well, our coalition will look through the budget. We're already doing that and we'll look mm. at the measures that the government has proposed. We'll take it as a whole and, obviously, you'll see a response in Peter Dutton's budget speech right, tomorrow but... night. So I'm not going to pick out individual mm. items or line items, Tom. What about when you talk about um, wanting people to go out and get work then... One of the biggest changes is the single parent payment, which we've known about for a few days. So increasing eligibility for that. So someone now with a 14-year-old, up to 14-year-old, <coughs> gets that increased payment. Do, do you see that as a barrier to a single parent going out and getting work instead? Is that your concern on that? No, I see that as welcome support. However, what you have to remember is that for everyone on a low income, cost of living bites the hardest. If you're on a fixed and low income, you absolutely are focused every single week on your grocery bill, mm. on your power prices, on, if you have a mortgage, the cost of your mortgage, and on the rent, which is probably going to go up a lot more than the rent assistance. This isn't about chasing the dollars in the welfare uh, payments. This is about, or should be about, restructuring the economy. I come back to my main point. Small-term compensation for large problems in the economy and absolutely okay. no plan by this government to fix them. I'll, I'll point out a lot of the welfare measures are, are permanent. Um, what about inflation? So the forecast is that inflation is basically almost the same as it was post-budget, as it was pre-budget, that it gets back to 2.7, 0.5% um, next financial year, so two financial years' time. So doesn't that say that there's no fire lit under inflation? Well, I've seen the Treasurer's spin on this, but I've also seen the commentary and I've also seen the numbers. I mean, you can't add $185 billion of spending over this budget and say it's not inflationary. I saw one commentator say there'd been $32 billion since the last budget in October. Uh, There's surely. some savings and you there can't, too. And you can't I think have it's a, a spending, net $21 billion figure since and then. And you can't have spending of $2 to $1 saved and say that's not inflationary. So I call baloney on those calls. So is that... Baloney, as you say, on Treasury's forecast on inflation. That's what these are. This is not Jim Chalmers saying here's where inflation gets to its Treasury. Is that baloney? 
Well, I know the commentators that have talked about this, S&P Global and the actual numbers that underline where the spending is. You cannot tell me that spending $2 for every $1 saved is not inflationary. So you're calling it... $185 billion over the course of this budget. I'll leave the Treasury to uh, make their own estimates and have their own conversations. Well, they've made the it, though, but you're saying you don't think they stack up, essentially. I'm calling baloney on that, Tom, because, honestly, you cannot have this much additional spending in the way that the government mm. has directed and, and not have it add to inflation. And the unfortunate okay. part of that is that it will still be the Reserve Bank that has to do the heavy lifting when interest it, it, rates go up. And, of course, the Treasurer will simply point to the Reserve Bank okay. not actually take responsibility for restructuring an economy that should be as efficient as it possibly can be. If, if we don't see rates go up and inflation does stick to that, then will you say, well, I'll they were right, I was wrong? I'll come back and talk to you then. Okay. I, I'm, I'm dealing with what's in front of us today in the Fair enough. budget. Fair enough. We like to, you know, just put a marker in there. Susan Lee, always happy to do that. appreciate your time today. Thank, Thank you. you.